Aloha, this is Jason from Hawaii. Today is March 25th, 2021. I am interviewing Julius Idano, the owner of Westside Comics and Games. Julius, welcome to the show. Hello, thanks for having me again. Yeah, no, thank you, Julius. Yeah, um, let me give a brief history to our, you know, to some of our new listeners. Now, Julius, now correct me if I'm wrong. I think I've, I've I think I've known you for about eight years when Westside Comics first opened up, right? Was it when? It's about right, yeah. yeah. When did when did Westside Comics open up? Was it? We opened uh, August of 2013 in Kapolei. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. I met you pretty early on. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I know our first. I know we. I did a first. Our first interview that we did was back in around 20. 18 and you know if people want to refer back to that one it's um episode was comics for fun and profit episode four 453 and the comic book page podcast retailer spotlight number five so okay um let's see i'm gonna start off um and the reason why i said today's date is march 25th we'll probably we will get into that a little bit later in the discussion um, first off, Julius, um, uh, can you give us um, this um, store's address and the store hours? Sure. Uh, the shop is located in IAEA now. We moved from the last time. Uh, the address is now 99-080 Kauhale Street in IAEA, 96701. Uh, and we're open every day, 10 to 6. Mm-hmm. We're only closed on Christmas, New Year's, and Thanksgiving. Okay. And then where can listeners follow um, the shop on social media? Uh, the only, the two social media outlets that we're very active on is Instagram uh, and Facebook. So find us there under our name, Westside Comics, Westside being one single word. Okay. Westside Comics and Games, excuse me. Let's not forget the games. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then um, let's see. Um, I'm just going to ask you, just if you can just like give our li- new listeners like a quick origin story, like where did you grow up, or was your first comic you read, you know. <laughs> oh, if only I could say I was rocketed here from a strange planet far, far away that blew up. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> I, uh, I was actually born in the Philippines, in Manila. Uh, we came here uh, in 1975 when I was just... 10 years old, yes, you can figure out my age from that. Um, (laughs) And I've lived here just about all my life, except for a short time span that I lived in California. Uh, Looking back at my past, I've been into comics for a very long time. I I remember that the first comic book that I ever bought or received as a gift was in 1973 or 4, I believe, and it, it was... Uh, Captain America, 175. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Mm-hmm. Captain America, 175. And I, I kept it for a long time, even though it was all beat up because I didn't know how to take care of comics back when I was 10. Um, but yeah, it, it started a, a, a career path for me that I didn't suspect would happen. <laughs> um, well, and then... I I thought about opening a comic book store or a game store uh, for a long time. I, I in fact I, I remember telling my mother when I was in high school that uh, one day I was going to open a game store. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I I must admit, and I will admit to all your listeners now that I am predominantly a gaming guy, mm-hmm. uh, but I do also do comics. I <laughs> two very <laughs> Great, strong loves for me. But yes, I, I am predominantly a gamer. Uh, not an electronic gamer. Tabletop, live, and in-person type of gamer. <laughs> and then, um, um, I was going to ask, um, going back, I know I'm this is kind of off the cuff, so it's kind of like, um, when did you start doing, like, um, when did you start becoming a gamer? Oh, well, that actually, that also started relatively young. I bought a board game, um, back in when I was seventh grade, I believe. The game was called Alexander the Great by Avalon Hill. Um, and the only person that would play with me who would 
do it who had the time to do it. it was my grandmother so i remember i have very fond memories of me sitting with my grandmother playing board games this was at a time when board games uh, paper uh, board games with the map and cardboard pieces were a pretty popular thing i i remember that you could buy some of these games at long's drugs before mm -hmm. um and i picked this this particular game up there um well, I, in eighth grade, I finally played Dungeons and Dragons for the first time. And this is way back when, you know, D&D &D didn't even have editions back then. It was just, you know, D&D &D the red book. Um, mm -hmm. We played that. Uh, and that, you know, brought out my love for role-playing games as well. So, uh, and it's all been, you know, all been downhill from there. <laughs> 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 I've been constantly playing games ever since then. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, I'm going to basically, so again, like you said, that you opened up the store in, correct me if I'm wrong, was it, it was August 2013, right? That's correct. Okay. And then where was the original location um, at that time? I for, because I forgot. The, 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 the shop was originally located in Kapolei, which is mm -hmm. uh, a little bit further out. Mm -hmm. uh, my original concept of, of opening the store was to be able to provide games and comics you know to, to areas that were not as easily served up for games or comics yes. so about as far off the beaten path as you could and still have customers mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it was a it was a good location for us um and you know and I'll, I'll tell you all about uh the new location later but yeah yeah it, it served us very well for for a good six years so. mm -hmm. yes and then um for our listeners um um ba basically you know for our listeners basically your the main focus of the store is basically is focusing on the tabletop games is that correct that's uh, absolutely correct um we do sell comics i do sell uh, predominantly marvel and dc titles only mm -hmm. um but we, you know, the bulk of our our shop is games. I mean, you can tell just from walking in the door. You know, I have, um, we do a lot of Warhammer 40k. We do a lot of Magic, uh, a lot of RPGs. You know, mostly Dungeons and Dragons, but other types of RPGs as well, um, and other types of board games. You know, like, like your well, right now, like the popular Pandemic, which is, <laughs> the environment seems to be still a popular game. <laughs> and then um in your old location at Kapolei and now in IA you know um you know um you um before the pandemic you used to hold tournaments correct and like how often did you guys hold tournaments this is all before the pandemic oh pre-pandemic uh in Kapolei we were holding events I would say we would hold two events a uh, uh, probably three if counting Dungeons and Dragons. Um, but yeah, we were holding at least three events uh, on average per week. Um, we slowed it down a little bit when we got to IAEA. Mm -hmm. Even then, we were probably doing two a week. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, and then you know, you know, and then how did, how did you come about choosing IAEA if you don't, you know, for your new lo location? Well, that idea yeah, ended up almost being accidental. Uh, in in wanting to serve the the far leeward side of the island, I did my best mm -hmm. to find a location, you know, that that was as close to the Kapolei as I could. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the, the 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 price of uh, real estate and rentals in Kapolei is very high. Mm -hmm. um, and as we looked more and more, we started to realize how high it actually was. So, mm -hmm. And the primary reason for moving was space because mm -hmm. we were having tournaments that were literally filling up the store from wall to wall. And, and even that, I had to move furniture around. Mm -hmm. So we were looking for a space that could accommodate a much larger crowd. Uh, so when we finally found one in IAEA, um, we were very happy with it because uh, the rent for our space, which is almost 50% larger than the original space, yes. mm -hmm. is almost the same rent oh, okay. as our location. Um, and the location now, 
uh, is very convenient for people because it's kind of centrally. We're we're about as far west as we can uh, as you can be and still be considered west. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> in less than a mile, we'll be in an east zip code. <laughs> but um, but that's you know it, it's a good location. It's it's very centrally located and the the size of the place is just the right size for for what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And then just to give our new listeners an idea of um, where Julia's shop is, basically it's um, a little it's a little bit closer to Pearl Harbor, right? Yeah, actually, pretty close to Pearl Harbor. I'm sorry. It it is quite close to Pearl Harbor. It's yeah. just over a mile uh, to Pearl Harbor. I think it's like two miles only. Oh, okay. And then now, correct me if I'm wrong, because um, I'm sorry, I'm kind of going off the cuff because. Like um, for your um, events and your tournaments, you used to have like a lot of military personnel to come out. When you had events at Kapolei, they would try to come out from Pearl Harbor side. And now is it closer for some of them? Um, yeah, when we were in Kapolei, we, we had a lot of customers that were coming in from Schofield Barracks. Okay. Because we were, we were close to them. Um, we still have a lot of customers that come from Schofield because we're, you know, for the type of games that we sell, we're still physically the closest uh, shop to them. Yes. Um, but now we also pick up uh, customers from uh, Navy and Air Force because they're close by at uh, Hickam, uh, Hickam and uh, Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a lot. We, we, we get a little bit of, thing, you know, a little bit of, about the only type of customer that is, that was much, that had more, had difficulty accessing the shop are those from the west side who relied on public transport bus um, um, because our location while there are bus stops close by mm -hmm. they're not you'd have to transfer a couple of times to, yes. to get to where you are um, so it takes much longer to get to our shop by bus than it used to mm -hmm. and so yeah it, it is harder for them and you know i feel bad for that but um you know, it did accomplish the goal of increasing the space that we had available to us. Yes, and to get, you know, for our new listeners, yes, because I've been to the Coppola shop, and it was, yeah, it was really, to me, it was kind of small, because I remember, I think there's been times when I've come on a Saturday, games were there, I was like, and I was just trying to get to the comics without bumping into someone sitting at the tables. But, yes, but, yeah. so, depending yeah. on the tournament, it was wall to wall. Yeah. And then at your current location, it's a lot bigger space because, uh, you know, the front part of the store is, you know, it's a easy accessible to comics. And then your tournaments are pretty much towards the back of the shop in IA, your current location. Is that correct? Um, right now, yes, because that's where we have a uh, large 40K table set up. Okay. Um, though to, uh, to give us some social distancing room, uh, card games and Dungeons and Dragons games will probably be held at the front of the store. Okay. Uh, to keep people spaced out. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then um, I'm going to start talking about your current location in IA. So when did you move to your current location? Uh, so we moved here uh, August of 2019. Uh -huh. um, you know, right after our lease ended at the uh, at the Kapolei location. Mm hmm. And then, um, let's see. And then, we've, you know, and let's see. I know we've already talked about, like, you know, what, um, com um, correct me if I'm wrong, did we cover, like, um, I can't remember if we talked about it before the recording, but um, the comic books that you sell there, um, it's, I know it's mostly DC, mostly Marvel, and then, and then you carry, I think, like, some IDW and Image Comics? Yeah, we, we predominantly carry Marvel and DC. Uh, I do have a small amount of uh, IDW and uh, image titles. Uh, not a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't carry the entire range. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do bring in, um, you know, when people want to subscribe slash pull list a, a title, you know, we certainly bring those in for just those customers. Yeah, okay. Now we, in addition to that, in the games, we also bring in, you know, because because they're so popular, we we also bring in, you know, Funko Pops, and mm -hmm. we do have a small amount of collectibles of, you know, Wolverine statues and things yes. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, let's see. And then um, before the pandemic, um, you're still like holding your um, magic tournaments and so forth there, correcting your current oh. location. Uh, tournament, yes, most definitely. Mm -hmm. And then um, now I'm, I, well, you already covered, so um, let me see. So at your current location, you know, how did you sp spread the word to attract new customers to your current location? Well, like with, uh, with a lot of things, it, it took a while to build up. Um, mm -hmm. We were fortunate because a lot of our customers from Kapolei did find us and are continuing to do business with us and we're very appreciative of that. Um, part of getting the word out to the people uh, meant some additions to what we do. So we did not have an Instagram uh, account mm -hmm. that we were using before the move. So once we moved, we started becoming active on Instagram as well as Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, we still don't do a, a whole lot of uh, outside advertising. We do participate uh, in, in uh, local community events, uh, comic book events and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly if the amazing Comic Con, we always participate with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, in a way, we use those as advertising, you know, because we, it uh, helps to have people see that we're where we are and who we are. So, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Now, I'm going to start talking. Um, this section of questions, because you know, like I said, today is March 25th, so um, I'm going to start. We're going to start talking about like you know what's going on now. Um, you know, during we're still in the pandemic. Now, the thing was, um, you know, like I know this week, basically, this week is like the one year anniversary, excuse me, <clears throat> the one year anniversary that Oahu went into its first lockdown. Um, and also, too, it's the one month anniversary that we are in tier three. So just to give our listeners just some background information, and I found this, and I try to gather all the information from try to simplify the information from all these um, news sources. Um, you know, of course, we know people are still wearing masks nowadays. We're still social distancing, we're still washing and sanitizing our hands. But like from last year, from October 2020, you know, Oahu was in tier two. At that time, social gatherings were only limited to five. Um, restaurants, if um, they only could have, uh, if there was a, they only could allow like, um, um, you know, if people were going to sit down at a table, it was only parties of five. Retailers at that time were only operating at 50%. And then um, on Thursday, February 25th, that's when Oahu moved into tier three. And basically, this is where social gatherings could be bumped up to 10 people. Restaurants could have a group of 10 people um, per sitting at a table regardless of the household and retailers, you know, will be able to operate without capacity restrictions. So do, um, I, I'm going to ask you, do you want to like clarify anything that what I said, or does that sound correct or? No, yeah, no, that pretty much captures it. Um, one of the things that we were unsure of as far as uh, guidelines was, you know, uh, retailers were allowed 50% capacity, but it's, it's hard to define capacity in terms of tournaments. Um, you know, clearly the store mm -hmm. could accommodate capacity of, you know, 30, even at 50%, we could accommodate 30 to 40 people. Yes. But, you know, I'm pretty sure it would have been wrong to put 30 or 40 people in a tournament. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. We were following, we tried to follow the restaurant guidelines um, because that seemed, it seemed more logical to follow that. Yes. Uh, we restricted, um, we were restricting crowds to no more than five. Uh, when it first started, we restricted no more than five in the shop at any one time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then eventually we allowed small groups to start playing, but again, no more than five people at a time. Mm -hmm. um, so this, this change in tier that, that started in February uh, is a big deal for us because you know, now that uh, the, um, the state's guidelines are allowing restaurants to seat up to 10 and mm -hmm. 10 from, they don't have to be from the same household either. 
Yes. Um, so we're following that as well. So now that we can seed up to 10, it becomes practical once more to hold small tournament style events. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. And then just for our listeners, um, originally, you know, I touched base with Julius, you know, back in December to do another follow-up interview. Um, originally I wanted to do it in the store, but I had to think about it a little bit more as like, it's safer for, you know, basically for, you know, all of us to just do it over zoom. Um, yeah. So it's just, that, that's another change that I, well, not a change I have to do, but I just wanted to make sure that everyone was safe because, you know, the interview, I didn't want to just hang around the store for about two hours and it gets a little bit more crowded and, you know, safety concerns and stuff like that too. So, um, can I ask you, so when Oahu went through its first shutdown, and also, too, to give um, listeners an idea, Oahu went through two shutdowns. Um, you know, um, first one, like I said, it was back in March of last year. Um, and the second one was, I, if I remember correctly, I think it was in August, I think, of last year as well. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. So if you don't mind, can you talk about what happened to your store and, 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 you know, and what happened to you and your staff, you know, when you guys had to shut down the store? Well, and that, and that was uh, a big problem because uh, clearly when you shut down the store, you're not going to make any money. Mm -hmm. um, we allowed for, uh, at the time, and, and even at this moment, uh, our online uh, store is not yet fully functional. So um, at the time, if you wanted something and it was an emergency, you know, we could make arrangements. Um, for doors, you know, curbside pickup. Mm -hmm. um, even with that, you know, we were probably, you know, I would be surprised if we even made 10 or 15% of our income during the times that we were shut down. So mm -hmm. those shutdowns were very painful to us. Mm -hmm. um, we're quite fortunate um, that uh, after the, after the shops were allowed to reopen, yes, uh, business has been very good to us. I, I, I can't emphasize to you, Jason, enough how thankful I am that our, there's so many customers that have taken such good care of the shop. And, and you know, I get in, I get comments from people all the time that, that thank, thank us for staying open and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, tell us how, how much they want to do business with us locally rather than buying from, you know, a big box shop online. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, we try to reward people like that as much as possible, and and, and but it, it's it's very gratifying and it's very um, you know warms the cockles of my heart, so to speak. Mm -hmm. There were so many, but um, yeah, the the shutdowns were were quite painful. Uh, but we are blessed that uh, now that the shutdown, and it doesn't look like, knock on wood, that we're going to be going back in that direction. Um, so, you know, things, that, and I suspect that a lot of the uh, a lot of the increase in business, part of it is probably coming from just the fact that, you know, we've been at this new location now for you know, over a year. So that mm -hmm. probably contributes to it. Uh, and I think there's a lot of people who want to do something when they're not working yes. <laughs> or when they're stuck at home, you know, for a lockdown or something, you know. So, um, and yeah, you know, tabletop games are, are still a great way to do that. Um. I'm going to ask, you know, like, um, you know, um, because I know during the first shutdown, because also too, it's like, you know, um, diamond distributors shut down. If I remember correctly for a month, DC had their pencils down thing. Um, and then now correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't some of the gaming factories shut down? They stopped producing games for a little while. Um, that's partially correct. Um, okay. A lot of the game, uh, a lot of the distributors in the United States uh, were temporarily shut down at, at the peak. Uh, okay. When we shut down, uh, a lot of shop, shops and distributors and uh, things in California were also shut down. And most of my distributors are in California. So if they shut down, nobody's shipping anything to me. Mm -hmm. um, some of the manufacturers make products that are made in China 
mm-hmm. and so they were severely affected by the lockdowns and things. Um, That's right. So they couldn't get the product out. Um, and there was just a general slowdown of things being produced at the time. Mm-hmm. Not not shut down, not complete shutdowns, and not elimination of product, but there were severe delays in, in a lot of stuff. Okay, uh, we were coming out two to three months past their originally scheduled release dates and things like that. So, mm-hmm. And then I'm going to ask you know during the store you know during the you know the the two shutdowns the lockdowns of Wahoo, you know like how did you guys overcome these challenges? Like did you guys you know, did you guys um, start up a, you know, like a, a, a mail order service or did you start to like, like you say, you guys start to do, if it was an emergency, like your curbside, did that increase your curbside pickups and stuff? Um, the curbside business, I mean, there was a lot of demand for it early on, like when the, uh, when we had just reopened from the shutdowns. Oh, okay. Uh, but I think now people are you know, quite comfortable you know, for the most part, coming in and picking up the stuff that they need. Um, we were in the process of creating uh, a web store, which we didn't have before. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were in the process of creating a web store. It's, it, here we are a, a year uh, into it, and the, unfortunately, the web store is not ready to go yet. We had to make some several tweaks to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's, uh, you know, at, at the very least, that's a way that, uh, that we'll have available to us for the customers. You know, they can, uh, and uh, one of the things that we're going to offer through the web store is actually home delivery. So, oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Again, unfortunately, there's, you know, it looks like there's less of a need because I don't think people are as, as concerned about it now, but, you know, we're, we're, we've set up the infrastructure to be able to do it, so we might as well offer it. Oh, yeah. No, that, but that's really good. That's re- that's really good, yeah. Right now, if a customer wants to come into your shop, you know, what safety protocols you know, is the store taking right now? Well, we, um, of course, we're taking a lot of safety protocols. And, and uh, with my wife being in healthcare, there was a lot of uh, emphasis to make sure that we did it right. So mm-hmm. uh, it has to be masked. Yes. Um, all staff are masked. All customers are masked. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't allow... Uh, bandanas and t-shirts being pulled over your nose and mm-hmm. that we, we saw a few of in the beginning yeah uh, we do clean up of the shop at least once a day uh, if we have high traffic areas that get uh, uh, that get touched uh, heavily by customers we do another cleanup um, you know we disinfect everything I mean everything that can be disinfected you know uh, clearly, we can't disinfect the comic books. Oh, but no, yeah. <laughs> as much as possible, all the area, you know, all the doors, all the handles, all the anything that the customer would, uh, and ourselves would touch, mm-hmm. is, you know, trying to protect each other. Yes. Uh, one of the things that uh, we've done to minimize impact also is to, you know, uh, we change the shifts that employees work. So now there's only one employee working each day. We don't have. Uh, two-person shifts anymore okay uh, so that way you know we don't expose each other to each other <laughs> yes yeah yeah mm-hmm. and, and we've had some challenges we you know one of our one of our staff member one of our staff members did contract uh covid oh, I'm um, sorry. with that um we've you know, all of us I, you know have lost loved ones um you know yeah. not necessarily here in hawaii but you know, it's, it's impacted us in, in many ways. And mm-hmm. so I think because of that, the seriousness of the situation hasn't escaped us. And so, you know, the staff is very diligent about keeping things clean and keeping things sanitary. Mm-hmm. Um, even uh, do contactless uh, credit cards now. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah, still can't take cash uh, without having contact. But, you know, we, mm-hmm. we keep it at a minimum where we can. Mm-hmm. No, but I'm sorry about, yeah, I'm sorry about that your staff, is your staff member okay now? Did they get oh, over yeah, it? That was, yeah, that was months ago and, and uh, you know, God bless them, they're young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're not like us old guys, right? <laughs> no, no, this stuff will kill us. <laughs> just, uh, for them, it just knocks them down for a week or so. Mm-hmm. So, 
Okay, so now, um, when did you start doing the, when did you start having um, some gamers do the tabletop? When did that start again? We actually restarted uh, allowing people to, to play in the shop in mm -hmm. January. January, okay. January 1st. Uh, we limited it to no more than five people per, per group. Yes. Uh, and we allowed two groups at a time. Oh, okay. um, so there were never more than maximum of 10 people. And, and even that, um, I, I think despite the fact that we made it available to customers, I think a lot of people were still uh, hesitant to come out, you know, because of concerns of COVID and, you know, understandably so. But, you know, for those who really needed to get out and, mm -hmm. and, and do you know, that, we, we made it available to them. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's good. Um, and then... Um, um, I, I'm going off the cuff. Like, so your gamers were they, um, um, were they excited to come back? And even though they had to practice the social distancing, the mask, and were they were they excited to come back to? I I think yes. Um, the I uh, we actually have a, a big event coming up this weekend, and it's going to be kind of a milestone for us because. Uh, this Saturday, we're holding our first magic tournament in over a year. Mm -hmm. And we were allowing people to call in to make their reservations because, you know, obviously we, we are limiting the numbers of people. So we had to take, we had to go by reservation. Mm -hmm. And you can tell uh, about half of the calls I fielded, the people were so excited that, yes. that we had something going again, that, that there was a tournament that they could play in and socialize with other people. So um, I think uh, I think that part is very good. And I think uh, you know, we're gonna look forward to, to seeing a lot of smiling faces behind the masks. Yes. Um, the, you know, and, and of course, when, when these people make their reservations or when people come into play, we tell them what the restrictions are. Our, at our shop, we're not allowing, you know, you have to stay masked. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not allowing the consumption of food, though mm -hmm. we do allow beverages, um, and we're asking people to, you know, to, in order to keep the crowd down, uh, we're asking people not to bring in um, like kids or you know uh, uh, entourage, uh, yeah. as it were. Which, which you know, in the past you know, that was fine. You know, if you yeah. if you needed to a tournament and you wanted your you to have no babysitter for your kids. Fine, leave your kids. You know, have them sit, sit down quietly and then watch uh, mm -hmm. an iPad or something. You know, we used to do that, but you know, just to keep the number of people down to a minimum, you yes. know, we're asking people to do that this time. Oh, okay. Well, that that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and people have been uh, have been very uh, positive with the response. I don't. I I haven't had anybody complain or be upset about the restrictions. In fact, uh, you know, it feels like people are mostly appreciative of the fact that we are continuing to have these restrictions, um, you know, despite the, the the case counts in Hawaii, you know, starting to drop considerably. Yes. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to ask. So, um, you, um, did was did you guys did you and your staff talk about like, you know, um, like you know, um why this date was chosen like um you know this saturday march 27 2021 was it to give you guys time to set up or yeah you know? that's all it was um you know we were from the date that we were allowed to to start doing these you know we needed some some time to kind of get things organized mm -hmm. uh as an example wizards of the coast who owns magic the gathering still are not allowing them shops to do official tournaments um, mm -hmm. this is the tournament that we're holding this saturday is technically not an official one uh, it's okay. just an event oh okay so, uh, so it's an unsanctioned magic event uh but you know the trying to weed through like little issues like that dungeons and dragons uh, should be starting up again soon we, we unfortunately lost our dungeon masters from you know, it's been over a year, so mm -hmm. <laughs> we've had two dungeon masters. One of them moved back to the mainland, and unfortunately, I think the other one is, uh, you know, too occupied with with work. 
Mm. You know, we've had to go looking for another one, and uh, hopefully, we'll yeah, we, we've, we're working on it. We, we, we should have a new one up and running probably the first or second week of April. So that's you know that's a second event that we'll have going on a regular basis. Uh, we're also mm -hmm. about to you know, see a, hopefully a X Wing tournament also in a couple of weeks. Uh -huh. We're yeah, hoping for things to get back to normal, whatever normal is now. But it sounds like it's pretty cool because you guys are you, you guys are slowly doing that right now. Because like you say, you're doing the magic and then you guys are planning because now you guys are, you know, planning to do dungeon your targeting date for magic uh, for Dungeons and Dragons is be sometime in April and then you're also doing you're looking to do also do another event with the X Wing Squadron game. Is that correct? Yeah, X Wing. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm going to start uh, moving. Um, do you have anything to else to add regarding the, the your gaming section? Anything else? No, I, no yeah. that's uh, that covered a lot of ground. So we're we're <laughs> we think we're good. Okay. All right. So because now I'm going to start moving into the um, the comics um, question area. So I know last time this year we had you know six comic shops on Oahu. You know. Um, your Shop, Other Realms, Dragon's Lairs, Choice Comics, um, Collector Maniac, and Gecko Books. Now, unfortunately, um, I know um, Collector Maniacs, I believe they closed down in um, last August. And then in October, Gecko Books um, also closed as well. Um, and I'm going to just say, you know, let me just say this. Um, Gecko Books was um, owned by the um, late Ted Mays. It's, you know, he was basically, um, Gecko Books was basically a, a staple in Hawaii, in Wa on Oahu. And, and it was unfortunately that, you know, he, he passed away too young, you know. Yeah. Yes, definitely. He, I know, yeah. So, and he, yeah, it was just, yeah, it, that was, that was very unfortunate. Um, um, now I'm going to say with, with um, and also to, I have to mention that with Gecko Books, um, the thing was that uh, when Gecko Books closed, Ted, basically Ted retired. So I'm just giving some listeners some background of that Ted retired. Um, he did spend, he did move to the mainland to spend some time with his family. So that was really good. And unfortunately, you know, he passed away on the mainland. So that was, you know, like I said, that that was very unfortunate. Um, yeah. I'm going to ask, you know, with with those two shops that close, have you seen an increase in comic book customers? Uh, yes, yes. Um, there's definitely a noticeable bump in in customers. I, I think, uh, and I didn't really expect a large bump and if anything, because of the physical location, uh, Collector Maniacs and Gecko Books are about as far to the opposite end of the island uh, from we are, from where yes. we are. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to guess that their predominant customer base you know, are people who live in central Honolulu or east Honolulu. Yes. Uh, and that would make uh, other realms physically closer to them. Mm -hmm. um, I suspect that you know some of that has gone in that direction. I think all of us, uh, you know, Dragon Slayer, Choice, and myself, uh, have all seen uh, bumps in business uh, because of the closings. Uh, but for us, it, it, again, because we're not so much of a comic store and more of a game store, uh, the bump was not dramatically high. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then. Um... Now, also, too, I know one of the um, drastic changes um, from la during the um, start of the pandemic last year was when DC um, moved away um, from Diamond. And I'm going to ask, so how is it working with um, Lunar Comics to bring in Diamond, uh, to bring in uh, DC books? Well, I, I can tell you, Jason, <laughs> when they had first made that announcement of the change, uh, it caused a great deal of anxiety on my part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm very pleased to say that uh, my relationship with Lunar has been stellar. Uh, they've been getting me my products 
on time for the most part. Um, we've had uh, no issues as far as uh, ordering product. Their ordering system is very easy. We're returning product, that's very easy. Um, so overall, uh, and the shipping cost is quite reasonable um, from, from Lunar. So overall, I am very pleased uh, mm -hmm. that uh, of, of shifting our business over to Lunar. It, it's actually worked out for the better for us. Oh, okay. Now, the other thing, and I keep going back, I keep referring back to this today's date, it's March 25th, 2021, is this morning, you and me, we both found out, you know, this morning that Marvel Comics, you know, has announced that they're going to go with a new distributor for their comics, their trades, their graphic novels. Um, they're going to be um, shift. Their new distributor is um, Penguin Random House. I'm going to ask, do, do you want to, I, we know that there's going to be more information, more news, you know, in the coming weeks. I'm, I'm going to ask, do you want to make any comments on that or anything? Yeah, well, uh, uh, quite a surprise. I definitely wasn't expecting it. Um, mm -hmm. We're, as you said, it's still very early. Uh, we still have to look into uh, which method is going to work out the best for our shop. Uh, if working with Penguin Random House is like any, anything like how our relationship with Lunar is, then it may be beneficial for us to, to switch over. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, according to the early emails that I received, we're still able to do business with Diamond if we prefer to do Diamond. Oh, okay. Um, the issue and the concern, of course, is if a lot of people, uh, including myself, uh, move out of Diamond uh, to Penguin Random House, what will happen to all of the other services that we use through Diamond? Mm -hmm. My shop already does not do a lot of IDW or uh, or image or any of the other brands is very small, you know, not even uh, not even a large handful of books that we pick up from uh, from all the other title uh, from the other publishers, you know, and and of course, you know, we do get our you know some of our collectible items through there. Well, obviously, the the question begs, you know, if people move their business out, how is that going to impact Diamond Comics' viability as a distributor? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if anybody has any answers to that question just yet, mm -hmm. um, but I think that will be the uh, that will be the thing for us to watch in the next few months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then <clears throat> I'm and I'm just going to throw this this question out there. Um, if you don't want to answer, that's fine. So because like I know your shop mostly focuses on you know bringing like your you know you bringing Marvel and DC. Um, um, it, it, you know, I mean, and you don't, like you already said, you don't bring in too much of IDW or image. Um, um, do, do you think that your shop may just shift more to just focusing, you know, just focus on just bringing in Marvel and DC, or are you going to, going to try, still try to bring in IDW and some image? I, I don't know. Uh, okay. at, at this point, it, it's... It kind of depends on how how the structure looks. Um, I, uh, I I'm I'm still beginning to digest the information, so I I really don't know which way it's going to go just yet. Mm -hmm. um, I would prefer to continue to pick up you know some image and some IDW through Diamond. Yes. Uh, if if they you know if their structure can continue to make that feasible, mm -hmm. and uh, also you know th there's no need for me to shift my business to to uh, Penguin Random, unless you know they offer terms that are you know so beneficial to me that I'd be stupid not to take it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but, yeah. so Ju you know, Julius, thank you very much for asking answering that question. Sorry, I know that was off the cuff, and like I said, there's you know, yeah, this this like a little changing news this morning. You know. <laughs> Hang on, there's always change. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's see, um, John Mail from the Comic Book Page podcast. Um, one question is like, you know, um, do you have a pull list for your regular customers? Yes, most definitely. Okay, all right. And then I'm, I'm just gonna ask like, do you do any um, special orders for your regular customers? Meaning like, let's say 
I, I'm just going to pull out a title. Let's say um, someone goes, hey, you know, I heard about um, this comic book series called Damn Cursed Children from Source Point Press. And that is an actual series. Hey, Julius, do you think you can order me? Can, can you, or would you be able to get me all five issues, you know, if, if it's still available and so forth? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we offer that service to anybody that wants it, um, not just our regulars. You can, you know, you can be a stranger to us, though. Uh, though we warn people that if you don't pick up, then yeah, we might discontinue that service for you. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, yeah, we we offer that 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 service to anybody. Special orders, uh, subscriptions, uh, whatever you want to call it, we make that available. Oh, okay, all right. And then um, let's see now. Well, I'm going to start slowly wrapping things up. So Drew from the comic book pay, um, Comics for Fun and Profit podcast, he's asking, where do you see the comic industry going in 2021? You know, I've, I've, uh, I've thought about that a lot uh, over the last couple of years because, you know, there's a lot of naysayers and doomsmiths that, that will tell you that um, internet uh, files or inter PDF down downloads of comic books are on the rise and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, that may be true, but I don't think you can ever lose paper comic books. Um, I think they're, you know, for, for those of us who collect uh, and enjoy the hobby, um, I, I think there's nothing quite like having the feel of paper in your hands and, and being able to read I mean, I read books online, yeah, sure, but I can't read a comic online. It just doesn't fill me with the same pleasure as touching paper. Mm -hmm. So I think that the uh, call me optimistic here, but I believe that the uh, the comic book industry is going to do is going to survive, is going to do well, mm -hmm. um, uh, not just for 2021, but beyond as well. I, I mm -hmm. think there, there's always going to be a demand. You know, they, they, I, I don't know if I've mentioned this in any of our interviews before, Jason, but uh, sometimes people will ask me, uh, customers will ask me, mm -hmm. well, which comic book do I think will be worth buying today that, that, that'll be worth a lot in the future? And I said, you know what? I can't tell you that. If I could tell you that, I'd be rich. Mm -hmm. but I can tell you one thing. Your PDF file will be worthless. <laughs> 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 That's a very good point. It is. <laughs> well, yes. yes, that's that's how I look at it. <laughs> okay. Um where do you see your store um in a year from now or five years from now? Um well I hope to be, you know, riding high on that trend. Um and I I, I think with the pandemic happening, I think it's, I think it's opened up a lot of customers, a lot of people, even non-gamer people, to the possibilities of doing something socially, live and in person. I think now that people have had a chance to to do a lot of electronic stuff, computer gaming and online D and D, you know, mm -hmm. they're all great. They're all, they all serve a purpose, mm -hmm. but. Almost everybody I talk to, uh, particularly for online role playing, almost everyone I talk to will tell me that it's not as much fun or it's not as uh, as as cool as being able to hang out with your friends and play D and D live. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to continue. And I think as you know, as these things become more and more mainstream, thanks a lot to the. Marvel and Warner for putting out such great superhero movies. You know, yeah. these things are mainstream. Um, mm -hmm. And they're taking our, our hobbies, which used to be, you know, done in the shadows in some back alley somewhere. Yes. Uh, and now we're, <laughs> you know, so I think that's only going to continue. And I think it's only going to increase as time goes on. Mm -hmm. All right, Julius, I'm going to start asking the fun questions. All right. How was your event? Can you tell our new listeners your uh, amazing Avengers collection and what issues are you still missing? 
Ooh, you mean my personal collection? Yes, your personal collection. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am missing two very key comic books in, in my collection. <laughs> And I offer this now to your listeners. If any of you guys have this comic book, you message us and I'll make you a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> I am missing one issue of a complete run of Tales of Suspense. Of course, that issue is Tales of Suspense 39. <laughs> I'm also missing about five issues of adventure comics with the Legion of Superheroes. Mm -hmm. And also one of those is Adventure 247, the first appearance of Legion. Um, so yes, I, you know, every, I look at the prices and I look at, uh, you know, what I'm willing to spend and I keep holding back. And I, you know, one, at one point I was, I said to myself, yeah, okay, you know what, I'll be willing to spend $2,000 to get you know this book and by the time i said that the prices were four thousand <laughs> so it never ends but yes i uh, uh those are the the two of the key books that i still don't have in my collection <laughs> and then correct me if i'm wrong because i'm trying to remember this from our last interview pretty much you have what you, almost a complete run of the avengers is that correct i do um i think i am missing three titles from the 1990s just you know they're they're uh, it's a it's a time period that's not very hard to get so i just you know when i'm at a convention i i look through and look for those issues that i'm still missing but other than that i i've got a complete run of uh, every volume of avengers mm -hmm. that's my uh, that's my personal pride and joy because I, I do i have been doing that one for a long time mm -hmm. this is this is off the cuff so i'm gonna ask have you read all your Avenger comics? I have read every comic in my possession. Wow. Um, Some of them very carefully. Yeah. <laughs> read every single comic. Sorry, I, I'm kind of going off the cuff, but um, do, what was your best Avengers run? Ooh, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the earliest Avengers were my favorite. Um, from one to about maybe the 40s, mm -hmm. even uh, yeah, the, the early and, and early and mid 60s, perhaps you know, up to about issues 63 or so, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly, including uh, you know, I like the uh, the the the, the Don Heck era where, you know, where it was only Captain America, Hawkeye, mm -hmm. Quicksilver, and Scarlet Witch, you know, that was, that was one of my favorite eras. Though the, um, the volume two run from the 1990s was, uh, from the late 90s, uh, was also quite good. I also enjoyed that. That was a uh, Perez, if I recall correctly. You second Perez, yes, yeah. Oh, yes, that was very good. Yeah. Um, when George Perez was here, Correct me for the amazing Comic Con in 2019. Did you did you get anything autographed from him? Oh, not any of my Avengers stuff, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to put ink on any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got him. To, I got him to sign some other uh, some other things that he did. <laughs> All right. Um, what was the most amazing thing that came through your shop, whether it was at the Coppola location or the IA location? You know, I, I've, I don't really know. There, there, there's so many different things that have come through the shop over the years. Mm -hmm. um, are you talking about uh, a specific like item or? Yeah, like a, like a specific item, either, I don't like Pokemon, a specific, like a Pokemon card or, or, a comic book issue that you thought you would never see or well um i did have somebody uh, bring us uh, and sell to us a it was quite amazing it was a run of amazing spider-man issues mm -hmm. um it was like about a about a 50 issue run of amazing spider-man um unfortunately for for the gentleman but and he was quite aware of this but he these were issues that he had from when he was a kid. Mm -hmm. So he had the spines taped up with scotch tape. 
<laughs> Other than the Scotch tape, you know, they were all anywhere between 4.0 to 6, 7.0 in, in condition, except for the Scotch tape. Yeah. Uh, which unfortunately would would take it down a bit, but um, you know, I paid him what I could for the, for the the shape that they're in. But that was the um, he had the entire uh, you know the Gwen Stacy run, the death of Gwen Stacy that that time period. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. that early late sixties, early seventies. Yeah. So it was about a four year run of issues that I, that uh, I was able to pay. Now most of them are gone now. I think it's, you know over the years we've sold all just about all of them, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, that was kind of, you know, there you go. nice run. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, was, you know, have you had any celebrity or comic book career pop into the shop unannounced at either uh, location? Yeah, you know, we, we, we do get celebrities from time to time. And, 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 uh, you know, they, and, uh, but there is one particular celebrity sighting or, happening at the shop that was quite significant to me okay we had come into the shop Gary Gygax's grandson now for those of you who may not be familiar with that name Gary Gygax is the gentleman who invented Dungeons and Dragons oh. his grandson lives in Hawaii oh uh, and unfortunately, he's he while he does gaming, he's not an avid avid gamer anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but we did get I did get the chance to talk to him, and uh, you know he shared some stories with me. And I think one of the most interesting stories that he shared with me that I, I that I, I will never forget is that he, as a young child, played Dungeons and Dragons with Gary Gygax as the dungeon master, his grandfather ran some games for him and his fellow cousins and when i think about that like wow how significant is that the guy that invented dnd &D is the one that runs your game <laughs> uh it was yeah that that was something that was quite moving and uh i haven't seen him in a while but i, I think he does still live in hawaii hopefully he's he's doing well and uh you know uh, we lost gary gygax a few years ago um but um, I, I believe his grandson's still here in Hawaii. So, wow, that that's pretty amazing. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah. My grandfather he used to be our dungeon master. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I love that story. You know. Best convention moments of any of the conventions you went to. And um, you know, let me ask you: which which comic book conventions have you gone to? I I really like going to com comic book conventions as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do try to to do as many as I can. Uh, the the one I see the most, of course, is San Diego because mm -hmm. uh, it's an easy sell for my wife and son. There's there's a lot to do, and there's a lot of celebrity sightings. So yeah, okay, it's an easy sell. Uh -huh. um, but I've been to uh, I've also been to New York Comic Con, mm -hmm. uh, and I've been to London Comic Con, so, mm -hmm. uh, and of course Hawaii Comic Con. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's a story I can share with you from uh, from London Comic Con, which I thought was kind of funny. It was my uh, my take advantage of this moment. Yes. Oh um, yeah. So I I was there and uh, I was in line to get signature from Haley Atwell, who many of you know is Peggy Carter mm -hmm. in the uh, Marvel series. But the line was long and we did it by lottery number and my lottery number was unfortunately quite high. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I was there as long as I possibly could, but then she had to go. Mm. So, and I was, you know, we were still about 50 away from my number. So I said, ah, I didn't get to see her. So the the handlers and the, the people from the convention dispersed the crowd since, mm -hmm. you know, but she was still there. She was still sitting down. She was still, you know, because she was waiting for her ride. So I'm just standing around the area. And there's just very few people in that particular area. I was just, my wife and I were standing around trying to figure out what to do next, where to go next. When all of a sudden, I can overhear in the background her talking to one of the handlers 
and th them saying that uh, her ride is going to be a few minutes late because it's stuck in traffic. So I'm like, hmm. So I asked the handler, he's like, because she's just sitting down. She's just waiting for her ride. So I asked the handler, hey, hey, do you mind if I, you know, get her signature? He looks at her and she nods. And I, she goes, go right ahead. So I went up to her and got a signature. <laughs> uh, and she was very friendly, very nice lady, definitely. That is so cool. <laughs> My convention moment of the year. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. I'm I'm just gonna ask. So, so the picture is it? Is it in your house? Because I I don't see it at the shop. It actually is at the shop. Um, it is. It, oh. Yes. Um, okay. So yeah, we uh, when I go to conventions, I actually try as much as possible to get as many uh, celebrity signatures as I can, and then I I put the pictures up at the shop. So that that's why you will notice at the shop there's. A bunch of convention style photos yeah. lying around with signatures made to either myself or to West Side Comics. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, so next time I when I'm at the shop, I gotta look for that Haley Atwell. I bet you, it's, I bet you, I've seen it. I've, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, the Star Trek guys. <laughs> okay. Um. <clears throat> all right. Let's see. I'm gonna ask. Um. What is your favorite takeout place near the shop? in IA, your current location? That is a tough question because there are so many good restaurants uh, in our immediate vicinity. Um, but if I would to, have to say... If you want to give two or three shout outs, that's fine. <laughs> my, my favorite amongst favorite would probably be Young's Kalbi. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, delicious, mm -hmm. delicious. <laughs> and uh, and the best dish, in my opinion, that they have over there is the big bone kalbi, big bone short ribs. So, mm -hmm. yum, yum. <laughs> All right, so listeners, um, if you are visiting Hawaii, of course, I'm sorry, I'm going to do the public service announcement. Please, for now, wear your mask, social distance, um, sanitize your hands. Please stop by Westside Comics and Games. And then also stung, stop by Young's Young's Cow B, right? For their um, Young's big bone Cow B, yeah. um, cow B plate. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, I'm going to start wrapping up. So again, can you promote the store's social media platforms again? Sure. Uh, you can find us on Instagram and on Facebook under West Side Comics and Games. West Side is one word. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then don't worry, we'll put it in the show notes too as well. Any last words to our listeners? Well, uh, thank you, Jason, for, for having me on, first of all. And uh, I just want to say to everybody, you know, thanks for supporting our shop. Uh, and, and thanks for supporting the comic book shops and game stores near you. Uh, without people like you, uh, we couldn't do what we, we do today. And, you know, where would you go to play if you didn't have us? <laughs> so much. Thank you. All right, Julius, thank you for your time. Thank you for, you know, letting me um, do a follow-up interview with you. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, so, you know, yeah, just like I said, Julius, just thank you very much. So, and of course, I probably stop in the shop probably sometime next week or in the next couple weeks. We'll be going through your, your, um, like your, um, like your um, dollar bins <laughs> again. <laughs> sure thing, Jason. <laughs> All right, until next time, guys, aloha. Aloha.